and welcome to my channel. My name is Bria and today I'll be sharing with you guys my law school application process, how it went, and some things I think you should know. So, <clears throat> for me, I applied to seven law schools. I applied to Duke, Penn State, Wake Forest, North Carolina Central, Southwestern, University of North Carolina Chapel Hill, and University of Maryland, Baltimore. I was accepted to Penn State, Wake Forest, North Carolina Central, and University of Maryland. I withdrew my application from Duke because it was early binding admissions. And when I was accepted into Penn State, I received a good amount of scholarship money and I was afraid that I would be accepted into Duke without any scholarship money. So I withdrew my application before the early decision um, mark. And I still have not heard back from Southwestern or UNC Chapel Hill as of yet. And so I'm just going to tell you guys a little bit about things I wish I would have known, things I now know, blah, blah. So anyways, the LSAT, um, everybody should be familiar with the LSAT. If not, get familiar with it because you'll have to take it if you want to go to law school. It is the law school admissions test. And it is comprised of logical reasoning, two sections of that, analytical reasoning, also known as logic games, reading comprehension, and an experimental section, which will be a section that's not graded. Um, it'll look like one of the other sections, but you won't know it's not graded. They're experimental questions for future tests. And a writing section, which most law schools um, don't really look at. It's not a like scored section in the LSAT, um, but I do not suggest just writing anything. Um, some people may glance at it, so on and so forth. So, I mean, it doesn't count against you, but put in a little bit of effort. And um, I took the Kaplan course at my university because they offered it for free, but I just wanted to share with you all that Khan Academy now offers free LSAT um, practice. And if you look online, you'll be able to find a free test as well to practice with. And I know that Law School Admission Council offers at least one free test, um, practice test on their website. So I took the LSAT twice. Um, I did better the first time than the second time. Um, I wouldn't advise you to take it again unless you really are going to set aside more time to study or change your study habits to really improve. And I wouldn't advise you to register for it until you've already made those changes, not in anticipation of those changes. Um, 180 is the highest you can um, get on the LSAT and it's graded on a curve or scored on a curve. And the cost is 190 From my experience, they're going up $5 every year. No see, no shade, but it was 185 and this now it's 190 So, anywho, once you've taken your LSAT, or even sometimes before you take your LSAT and you plan on taking your LSAT, you're going to get into the applying to law school process, the application process, and that's when the Law School Admissions Council and the Credentials Assembly Service come into play. So, the... Credential Assembly Service is on the LSAC website and it basically compiles all your information such as your transcripts, your LSAT scores, your letters of recommendation, so on and so forth, and it packages it and sends it off to law schools. That service is going to cost you $190, $190 as of right now, and they're probably going up to, and it costs you $45 every time that you send an application into a law school. So they're going to package your information and charge you $45 each time they send it off. So, I mean, that's probably going up too, but that's what it is right now. Take the information. Um, <laughs> so, yeah. And so, also, you know, one of the big things that when you're applying to law school, you need to put a lot of time and effort into is your personal statement. And so, with the personal statement, one second as I turn this page. <laughs> Most personal statements are two pages. And I'm going to tell you guys my do's and don'ts for your personal statement. So, do's. Do be yourself. Keep it interesting. Proofread. It is very, very important to proofread. You do not want any grammatical errors. And also, have it read by someone else and not your mom. You know, your mom likes you a lot. It'll be a lot of times she's like, oh, I know where she's going with that. Or she, she will have, like, bias, but she won't know she's being biased. And so maybe someone else that you trust um, that you will allow to read over it that will actually dig deep into it and make sure that it flows and that it's grammatically correct. 
consider your audience. So, of course, you're not writing to your friend. You're not writing to someone who already knows you personally. Um, you're writing to someone who doesn't know you. And so, um, consider that. And consider that the, the tone. Consider any passive text. Consider any things that won't register with them because... Like, okay, for instance, you don't want to go really hard for a cause that may be offensive to that admissions council. So I'm not saying shy away from things that you're passionate about, but what I am saying is consider who you're writing to and you don't want to come off as closed-minded. That's all. Um, read the prompt. Okay, it's easy for a lot of people to start writing like, oh, yeah, I know why I want to go to law school. But sometimes the prompts are specific to what that school wants to know. And so you want to read it so you make sure you're answering the questions. Um, choose a narrow topic. So it may ask you, why do you want to go to law school? But you don't want to list 10 different reasons in those two pages. You want to narrow it down to make sure that everything flows and that everything registers. So here, sorry, my mom caught me mid video rung my watch, rung my phone, had to stop, we're back. Don'ts. Um, don't use legal terminology. You are not an attorney yet. Don't restate your resume. They're going to have a copy of your resume. You don't want to just restate it in paragraph form. Don't write it in the same day and submit it. What you want to do is you want to write it down, you want to set it aside, maybe for a day, maybe for a week, let it marinate, and then go back and read it and think, okay, is this still like the golden star personal statement that I thought it was, and does everything still flow, have someone else read it, etc., etc., before you send it in. Um, don't use your personal statement to explain discrepancies in your application, such as your LSAT score, your GPA, or criminal history. Um... You're going to be allowed to write an addendum in most cases, in all cases that I've seen, um, about those things. And so that is when you can explain, oh, a relatively low LSAT score, or a low GPA, or maybe a criminal past. That's when you would talk about that. That's when you would explain that. Your personal statement is not the time to explain that. Um, don't use cliches. I want to save the planet. I want to save the world. You know, don't we all, but narrow it. Um, don't offend the reader. That goes back to um, knowing your audience. And mm, bleh, sorry, guys. Don't mention the school by name unless it's a requirement. So when you go to submit your personal statements, it may become easy for you to choose uh, the wrong personal statement if you've listed them by names and the one thing that you don't want to do is send a personal statement to do that says, oh, why well, I want to attend USC Chapel Hill because that will immediately turn off the admissions council and it will ding you more than it would have helped you if it would have actually said Duke. So with that being said, you know, don't do that. Unless they say, why do you want to attend Duke? You say, I want to attend Duke because. But if that's not one of the questions and it's not required for you to do that, I wouldn't do that. Um, a diversity statement, I encourage everybody to write a diversity statement. You are diverse in some way, shape, or form, and you should write about it. I encourage you to write anything that applies to you because, I mean, if you write it clear, precise, and to the point and well-written, then it can only help you. Um, addendums, if you have a relatively low LSAT score like myself, I wrote to that because um, I have a relatively high GPA. And I don't believe my LSAT score um, shows how I perform in law school, and so I wrote to that, and I, clearly it helped me because I haven't been in IJ. yet. And uh, the time to hear back is about one to two months. So that has been my experience. Um, I hope that was helpful. And if you guys have any questions, leave them in the comments below. Be sure to like, comment, share, subscribe, all that good stuff. And I'll see you guys back here next time.